I'd like to talk about substitutions in multiple integrals, but I'd like to start with substi the substitution rule for a single integral. And so this is the substitution rule in the way it's usually written down in most books. The definite integral from a to b of f of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to the definite integral from g of a to g of b of f of u du, where we've made the substitution u equals g of x. And usually after you see that rule, you do a problem that kind of looks like this one, where you very clearly see an inside function whose derivative just happens to be sitting right there, just like this, right? You have an inside function multiplied by its derivative. So you say u is x squared plus 1, du is then 2x dx. We change our bounds, right? We put the old bounds into the function, right? So we plug in zero and we get out one, we plug in one and we get out two. And then two x dx, well that's literally just du, and then this is just f of u, u to the one half power, pretty easy to find this definite integral, right? Just using the power rule and we end up with 4 root 2 over 3 minus 2 thirds. And, well, it's almost silly that I just happen to have that function's derivative sitting there, and the substitution rule wouldn't have been particularly useful if I always had to have a function and its exact derivative sitting on the outside of it. So a lot of the times when we were talking about the substitution rule or using the substitution rule, we probably didn't see that exact situation. And we saw something that looked a little bit more like this. Where we definitely saw an inside function whose derivative is not sitting on the outside, but we went on and just said, yeah, let's try it and see what happens. And we just managed to change things around until we could do our substitution anyway. And so I'm still plugging my old bounds into this function to get my new bounds. All right, and then I evaluate this, and there's nothing really too interesting to do here, right? You can imagine finding that definite integral. But I want to pause here because this, to me, looks more like that. Right? I have this extra thing hanging out here, right? That is actually a derivative. It's actually the derivative of x equals one half u minus five over two, right? The inverse function dx is one half du. And so what we could actually do in our substitution rule, because there's nothing special about variable names, is swap the roles of x and u. And then this actually looks more like the substitution rule. I took an integral that looks like this and went backwards to this, taking my old bounds from 5, 9 back to the bounds 0, 2. And so this is actually more along the lines of the substitution rule we're going to use for multiple integrals. Now one of the things this always makes me think about is that we actually did something very similar when we had problems that looked like this, our trig substitutions, right? They were in x equals, right? Like this is an x equals. And when we went through that way, we really used the substitution rule going that direction back then when we did that. One other thing I want to point out is that if I think about this interval, it was the interval from 0 to 2, very clearly it is 2 units long. This interval is the inter interval from 5 to 9, which is 4 units long. And what I realize is that this is the scaling factor to go from the u's back to the x's, that it's 1 half as big. So let's talk now about what we can do with multiple variables to try to have a similar rule. So let's start with a double integral. It's 
So let's say I have a double integral over a region R, and that for some reason, it's difficult to integrate over whatever region R I'm dealing with. And so what I'm hoping to do is use a substitution to make the region or the integrand hopefully both a little easier to deal with. Well, I'm going to need a substitution. I'm going to let x equal sum g of u comma v. So, and y is going to have to equal sum h of u comma v. I do that in substitution. Instead of x's and y's, I'll have u's and v's. And so hopefully I will end up with a double integral over some region that I'm going to call g of f of g of u comma v comma h of u comma v, right? I plug these in, and now this function is on u and v times. Well, if it behaves like this, it's going to need to be times some scaling factor. So I'm just going to leave a blank there for a moment, right? I need to figure out what goes there, and then du dv which I've run out of room here a little bit, but let's see, times du dv. Okay, so that didn't work, so we'll just put it down there, du dv. All right, so that scaling factor, I need to figure out what goes there. And here it is. It's called the Jacobian named after the mathematician Jacobi, j of u comma v is equal to the partial of x with respect to u, the partial of x with respect to v, and then partial of y with respect to u and partial of y with respect to v, and then we take the determinant of this matrix. Well, when we were introduced to determinants, they were scaling factors. And this determinant of partial derivatives gives me my scaling factor for this substitution. But I need to be careful because if I change rows, my signs could change. So this is actually the absolute value of J of UV du dv and of course we could think about changing the order of integration in the same ways we have so far all right so g is in a uv plane and i've drawn a rectangle here because one of the goals sometimes we have is to make our region of integration better the substitution x equals g of uv y equals h of u takes me back to this region, right? U and V are my independent variables there. So I plug in a U and V and I get out an X, Y. So it's kind of funny because we're going this way, but our map's designed to take G back to R. And for that reason, sometimes you'll hear this referred to as the pre-image of G, right? When I plug points into a function, I get out an image. Well, this is the pre-image of that function. Okay, so our substitution rule looks like this. The double integral over the region R is equal to the double integral over the region G of F of G of UV comma H of UV times the Jacobian in absolute value, du dv, where our Jacobian is that determinant of partial derivatives. In our next video, we'll see an example.